Hey everyone, that's STEM Guy here. No matter where your classroom is located at around the world, I hope you are having a great day. It has been some time since I dropped the video, but I am back with another lesson plan overview. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on the Build a Boat Challenge. Now, if you want to run this challenge exactly like I did in my classroom, check the video description box below. I'm gonna have a link to my actual lesson plan that I used in my teacher pay teacher store on there for you to visit and check out if you're interested. Also, if you have not watched my video on how I utilize STEM shops, or in this case, the boat shop in my lessons, please go ahead and check that out too because it'll give you a little bit more insight on what's going on during the actual building phase of this challenge when I run it in the classroom. So the purpose of this video is to make sure that if you want to run the build a boat challenge in your classroom, when you run it, you look like an absolute professional because you're going to learn all the stuff that I did wrong that I wish I knew before I ran this challenge. The first thing that I wish I knew before I ran the build a boat challenge was that I probably should have done a lot more prep work on my end. And when I mean prep work, I mean making sure that my pool is working. I brought a kiddie pool into the classroom and I filled it up on Monday morning and I realized that it had a leak. Lucky for me, our school had a second kiddie pool. So I ran up to the attic and I got that second kiddie pool and I ran it down and I started bailing water over into it and I'm dripping sweat and I have a class coming in in about 12 minutes and I realized pool number two is leaking. Not great. So lucky for me, there is a third kiddie pool in the attic of my school. So I ran up the steps. I got the pool. I ran back to my classroom. My class is in down in five minutes. My alarm's going off that they're coming in and I'm there bailing water and bailing water and bailing water. And this time I stacked all three pools on top of each other with the one I never tested yet on the tippy top, hoping and praying that it held and didn't leak. And luckily it did. But it was a lot of time that I wasted in the morning that I didn't need to waste. So if you're gonna run this challenge, make sure that your pool is not leaking. Also, if you are a gen ed teacher and you have just you know one science period that you're gonna run this experiment in with just one class, you don't need to use a pool, okay? The kids are gonna have just as much fun if you get one of those clear storage bins from Target, fill it up with some water, do one boat at a time. They're gonna have a blast. They can still gather around it and have fun and your cleanup is not gonna take nearly as long as mine did on a Friday evening when I was the last car out of the parking lot. My second tip for this challenge is to not underestimate your goal. And I set my goal at 35 pennies for my students. I thought nobody's hitting 35 pennies. Well, I was wrong. A lot of groups went 100 plus pennies. And when groups go 100 plus pennies, it really depletes your resources. And it really brought the lesson to a grinding halt because it took so much time to reset after each um, test. So maybe run it yourself with the resources that you plan to give your kids and see how many it holds and then come up with an estimate for your class based on that. Don't go too low because it's not going to really be that big of an achievement for the kids and they're not going to feel super proud if they hit a number that every single person is hitting. Tip number three is knowing your time constraints. If you, like I said, are a general ed teacher and you have a whole science block that you can just be flexible with, then sure, have the kids add one penny at a time, let them place it. You can kind of run wild with it. But if you're a specialist like me and you're up against the clock and have a 45 minute block for the kids to learn, build, and every group test, adding one penny at a time did not work. On Monday, I was doing one at a time and I had classes at my door. Teachers like, I gotta pick up these kids and other classes trying to come in like, hey, take my kids. I wanna go have lunch or I wanna go plan. So just timing was a mess. So I had to switch to five pennies at a time. The kids are uh, pretty good at counting by fives. Even even our, um, you know, third, I only ran it with third, fourth, and fifth, but all of them were perfectly capable of counting by fives when we added it on. Um, and it sped up the testing process so much. Uh, and, and it still got the desired effect of, of what, the, what I wanted the students to get out of the lesson. And um, they still had a ton of fun with it. And my last tip is uh, pick your resources wisely. I use pennies and I, looking back in hindsight, I wish I didn't. Um, pennies, believe it or not, were extremely hard to come by. 
I was going to banks and they were like, hey, sorry, we have a coin shortage. We can't give you any pennies. And I'm like, well, that's not great because I need some. Um, I was lucky enough that I had 100 pennies. I had a 50 penny roll that I got from a Harris Teeter supermarket and I was able to find 60 between my fiance's purse and my car. Um, so I had, you know, 110 pennies that I was dealing with the first day. Lucky for me, our school was having a book fair and the librarian was like, oh, I got rolls of pennies. So she kind of saved me towards the end of the week. But try to pick something that's a little bit more available. When I posted this video on TikTok and it blew up, um, some people were commenting like, hey, when I was a kid, we did it with marbles or we did it with paper clips or we did it with gummy bears. So you can kind of be creative with the weight that you choose to use to add onto the boats. Pennies are fine. They made the water disgusting. If you're gonna be using it all week, pennies probably aren't it. Uh, but if you're doing this one time, you have a smaller class, sure, go pennies, why not? Uh, but just knowing your resources and, and having them ready to go is a huge time saver. So there you have it. There are my four tips that I wish I knew before I started this challenge. Again, if you wanna run this challenge exactly like I did, know how long I gave the kids to build, know what supplies I gave them, know how the STEM, stop, uh, STEM shop, or the, in this case, the boat shop worked, check out my lesson plan on Teachers Pay Teachers, support your fellow teacher. Uh, also, check out that video on how I run STEM shops because it's, it was really crucial to this lesson and some of the other lessons that I have videos for uh, that I plan on recording and getting out to you guys. So check those out, like and subscribe. I will see you next time.